Welcome. In about 60 AD, a Greek fellow by the name of Hero of Alexandria published a form of the area of a triangle uh, in terms solely of its side lengths. Uh, we normally, when we look at a triangle, if it's A, B, C, we say its area is half base times height. Well, the base can vary depending on which way we're looking. In this case, um, I'm looking at base C, I guess. And the height here would have to be the altitude of the triangle, which is actually very difficult to figure out, especially if I only give you the three side lengths, namely, say something like 10, 12, and 13. Work out the area of that triangle. Good luck to you. So this fellow hero actually figured a way to work out a formula for the area of a triangle based solely on the three numbers you're given for the side lengths. What I'd like to do is actually derive that formula here. It's not, uh, the, the proof is not difficult. In fact, it's conceptually, it's extraordinarily easy. The algebra that, that involved becomes quite, quite nasty. Uh, one approach is probably the, the classical approach that's available to um, all young students who have discovered Pythagoras' theorem but are keen on algebra might be to go as follows. So let me, uh, let me go for it. Oops, I need my pen. So let's suppose we have a triangle, A, I guess I'll call the base B this time, C. Um, I will actually draw on the height, which means the height's going to split the base into two parts, which I'll call X, and the remaining part must be B minus X. So we know the area of the triangle is half base times the height. But the trouble is I don't want to be working with height. Well, what I shall do is uh, use Pythagoras' theorem on the left part of the triangle, which tells me that x squared plus h squared is a squared. I'll use Pythagoras' theorem on the right half of the triangle, which tells me that b minus x squared plus h squared is c squared. Let me just expand this guy out. b squared minus 2bx plus x squared plus h squared equals c squared. Look, I recognize x squared plus h squared. It's up here. It's a squared. So it tells me that uh, b squared minus 2bx plus a squared is c squared. Well, that's grand. That gives me a formula for x, which is actually not what I wanted. I want a formula for h. But let's do it. Uh, x would have to be a squared plus b squared minus c squared all over 2b. Fine. But let me substitute that back into the original formula and get a formula for h from that. So that tells me that h squared is a squared minus x squared. Uh, I'm just going to just save myself a little bit of woe. Uh, let me go back and multiply this by 2. So that's really going to say that 2a is bh and square it. So 4a squared is b squared h squared. The reason I want to work with this formula for area is that I can just go for h squared directly. All right, so that tells me 4a squared is b squared times a squared. But uh, h squared, what am I saying? Which is a squared minus x squared. Oh, here goes. This is where the algebra becomes a bit nightmarish. Here's my formula for x, and if I square it, I get this. So 4a squared is, all right, a squared b squared, doo -doo -doo -doo, minus a squared plus b squared minus c squared, Ooh, messy handwriting over, uh, looks like just 4. Uh, let's put this over a common denominator. In fact, let's multiply everything by 4. That might be easiest. 16a squared is 4a squared b squared minus a squared plus b squared minus c squared squared. Now, that's grand. So that means I've technically now got a formula for the area of a triangle. If I divide both sides by 16 and um, take the square root, we've done it. That's fine. That's a valid version of Hero's formula. But, he, but Hero actually went a little bit further without the tools of algebra, because algebra wasn't invented until later in the history of mathematics. But nonetheless, wrote down a formula equivalent to the following. Hero, somehow, on his bits of papyrus or bits of sand on, the, on, the, on a sandy shore somewhere, managed to work out that this expression is equivalent, oh, where's my pen gone, sorry, very tedious, to writing 16a squared is, clever fellow, a plus b plus c times a plus b minus c times a minus b plus c times negative a plus b plus c. In fact, if you, want to, if you want to do it, you can expand this out and see it is indeed equivalent to this. If I divide everything by 16, I can divide each of these terms by 2. And if I now take square roots, there is Hero's formula for the area of a triangle. And that's actually nicely, nicely uh, presented. And what most people do, they recognize that a plus b plus c is the perimeter of the triangle, and we want half of that. So they call this the semi-perimeter. So what really happens is you've got the square root of the semi-perimeter, and this term here is actually 
plus c minus 2c is really the semi-perimeter minus c when I divide by 2 times the semi perimeter minus b times the semi perimeter minus a. So a lot of books will actually present the hero's formula in that form there. So that's it. That's how you can work out the area of a triangle knowing nothing but its side lengths. And it's quite beautiful, it's quite swift, just messy algebra. A, a very conceptual proof, you want another exercise in algebra with the following. Uh, let me draw my triangle again. Do, 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 do. Might be a good exercise for kids in uh, a trigonometry class. A, B, C. And let me look at one of these angles. Uh, one learns in a trigonometry class that the area of a triangle is half AC sine theta. That is the product of the two side lengths about an angle theta times the sine of theta. Also, the law of cosines tells me that B squared is actually A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of theta. Well, I suggest you solve for sine theta in the first equation, solve for cosine of theta in the second equation, and use the fact that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. If I substitute my formula for sine theta, I'll get the area A appearing in it. When I substitute my formula for cosine theta, I'll get the side lengths A, B, and C appearing in it. This must be some formula for the area of a triangle in terms of the original side lengths A, B, and C. And if you've got the patience and about a page of algebraic uh, uh, facility, you will be, in the end, able to derive Heron's formula. So as a little exercise, or maybe I'm going to be a little bit mean here, could you possibly tell me then what Hero's formula says about the size of a triangle of side lengths 10, 12, and 23. Just a little practice, put those numbers into the formula and see what you get. And then see if you can explain what's going on. Alright, thanks very much.